Hello, welcome back. This is ECG case number seven. I just want to take a minute and make sure uh, you guys are all aware. There's uh, other videos out there, so check out ECG cases one through six. Uh, also, head over to paramedicine101.com if you ever get a chance. There's all kinds of great information on there. And the Paramedicine 101 Facebook page uh, also has a lot of good stuff, uh, you know, especially from other websites, other videos uh, that I'm constantly putting on there for people's uh, emergency medicine education. So here's the case uh, for, this, for this ECG. You respond to a 59-year-old male uh, at his residence. He states to you that he's having severe chest pain and he's short of breath. He looks pale, cool, and diaphoretic. And, you know, that's all you have for now, and then you get an EKG. So here's the EKG that you obtain. Sure, there's a, there's a little bit of baseline artifact, okay? Uh, I'm not giving you the numerical uh, data here, but, or the GE Marquette interpretive algorithm, but we can still look at this EKG and hopefully make some sort of interpretation. First thing we're going to do is look at our, our frontal plane axis. So we're going to look at these first six leads here. And, you know, just doing the quick method, uh, Using the quadrant method, you can just make a circle, okay, and you do your lead one. This is the positive electrode, AVF, positive electrode, negative electrode over here, negative electrode over here. So then we're first we're going to look at lead one. Lead one is positive, so we shade out the negative side of lead one. Look at lead AVF. AVF is positive as well. Shade out the negative side of AVF. And we're in the normal quadrant. So we know that our, our QRS axis is normal. Uh, also, we have, I kind of skipped over this, but we, we have a sinus rhythm. You have P waves, and they're upright in all of the, uh, these leads, except for in AVR, they are negative. Uh, better look at that one there. Uh, they are negative in AVR. So uh, we have a sinus rhythm, a little tachycardic, if you were to do the... Uh, the box method, the large boxes, it's a little bit faster than 100. And do we see ST changes? Do, let's take a look at this. And you certainly do. I think that everybody would notice that you see ST depression in almost every lead. Let's see, lead 2, lead 3, AVF, uh, over here on the low lateral leads, V6, V5, V4, maybe a little bit in V3. Uh, V2 is kind of flat, and then V1 looks maybe a little bit elevated. AVR looks elevated, and AVL maybe looks a little bit elevated as well. Lead 1 looks depressed. Okay, so it doesn't really fit an infarction pattern, does it? I mean, uh, if it was a uh, high lateral infarct, you should have uh, ST elevation lead 1 as well. If it was a septal infarct, uh, well, you wouldn't really hopefully have this over here or or this ST depression over here. So it, it doesn't really fit any of our infarction patterns that we're aware of. But we do see a lot of ST depression. So, I mean, generally we chalk that up as ischemia or uh, sometimes uh, a digitalis toxicity can cause ST depression, but that's usually more of a scooped out uh, ST depression. Looks like, you know, somebody took an ice cream scoop and, and scooped out part of the ST segment. So. Uh, let's just, you know, for the sake of argument, say that this patient is not on any digitalis or digoxin, uh, and we want to know what's going on. They look sick. They look like a, maybe a cardiac patient or a shocky patient, but they don't really fit an infarction pattern. So, I mean, generally, we'd usually say this is uh, global subendocardial ischemia or something like that, which might not be totally wrong, but there's something else that this EKG here is very indicative of. So when you see this global ST depression with ST elevation in V1 and greater ST elevation in AVR, that's highly indicative of a left main coronary artery stenosis, LMCA stenosis, or a three-vessel disease. Left main coronary artery stenosis or three-vessel disease. So what does that mean? Well, the left main coronary artery, that's the big boy. That's before it bifurcates into the left circumflex and the left anterior descending artery, you have your left main coronary artery that comes directly off the aorta. Stenosis, oh, I forgot the T in there. Stenosis simply means narrowing. And so if you're narrowing, you know, you have plaque buildup in that coronary artery 
and it's at high risk for occlusion. So, you know, sometimes it's called a critical lesion when it when the plaque shell kind of breaks off and it starts to want to clot and, and repair that damage. Uh, and that lesion can lead to an occlusion, which in turn would, it would probably be death if it was the left main coronary artery, but it's a severe infarct. So these are still critical patients. They still probably need to go to a PCI facility. Uh, there's, there's a push for this to be considered, you know, uh, it's, it's not a STEMI because it doesn't have the, the L ST elevation that we're no, used to seeing in two contiguous leads. But there's a push to call this a STEMI equivalent, a STEMI equivalent, okay, STEMI equivalent. And that push is to get this patient the critical uh, expeditious treatment that they deserve. Because if you look at, let's take a look at the coronary arteries. Uh, and looking here, you could see this is where your aorta would be. And your left main coronary artery is right here. Well, that left main supplies both the LAD and the left circumflex, which we, both, we know are both important. So if you cut that off, you get all of your blood supply, your oxygenated blood, cut off to your left ventricle pretty much. And, you know, death would subsequently occur uh, soon after. Now, I said the other thing that this uh, EKG pattern here, this EKG pattern here with ST depression and all of these leads, ST elevation, okay, ST elevation V1 with greater ST elevation AVR. And this ST elevation AVL, that only increases the likeliness that this is an LMCA stenosis. Again, the T's missing. An LMCA stenosis. So it's only increasing uh, the, the uh, sensitivity or specificity of that finding. So, and then if you had a, a three-vessel disease, three-vessel disease would be, you know, some sort of uh, lesion or stenosis to all three of your main coronary arteries, which is not good either. So both findings or both conditions are, are terrible to have. And, you know, you can, you can note that on the 12 lead EKG by seeing a widespread ST depression, depression, widespread ST depression, Okay, and what else did we see? We saw ST elevation in V1, but the STE or ST elevation in AVR was greater than that of V1. And then something that makes it even more likely to be uh, an LMC stenosis if you see STE in AVL. Now, you don't always see the ST elevation in AVL, but it is... Uh, it is a common finding with this LMCA stenosis pattern. So I hope that helps. Here's another case from EMS12lead.com. EMS12lead.com. You hear me boast about this website a lot. This is not my website. It's uh, Tom Boothale, uh his website. He, he works with uh, Christopher Watford, uh, another one of the editors on there. And th they put all kinds of great EKG information, good education out there. I highly recommend looking through their archives. But here's one that I found on, the, on his website. Uh, where he talked about LMCA stenosis and three-vessel disease. And you could see, again, you have the ST depression, you know, and, and all these leads here, uh, your left precordial leads over here, over here in V2 and V3. Now it starts to flatten out, maybe a little bit of ST elevation V1, mostly flattened. But then look at AVR. AVR, AVR it's like the Rodney danger field of leads. That's what Dr. Matu calls it, because it gets no respect. Maybe it's a little bit dated of a, of a joke. But if you remember Rodney Dangerfield, he always, always talk about no respect. I get no respect. And AVR is kind of that lead because we usually ignore it. I mean, the extent of a, uh, what a paramedic gets taught about AVR is usually make sure the first thing you check is make sure lead one is up. Oops. Kind of skipped. Make sure lead one's up and uh, AVR is down. That's usually the extent of your training on lead AVR. Actually, it can be helpful with acute pericarditis. Uh... It could be helpful with pulmonary embolisms, basal or, uh, injuries, and, you know, here you go with LMCA stenosis, ST elevation, and AVR, very important finding, okay? These patients are not STEMIs, but you got to think of them as being very much like a STEMI. They're at super high risk for dying, okay? So get them to that cardiac facility. Uh, get them, you know, to, to a cardiologist that's going to help them and explain your findings. Maybe the ER doc will kind of give you a crooked look. And, and not understand what you're talking about, but there's a chance that he'll know. So uh, I also wanted to put my contact information on here. If you want to get a hold of me, send me an EKG or ask a question. Uh, 
anytime you want. Just send something over to paramedicine101 at gmail.com. Paramedicine101 at gmail.com. Again, go to my website. There's the URL, paramedicine101.com. And subscribe to this channel. Check out the videos that I put up on a regular basis. I got great stuff on capnography. Uh, there's other good EKG stuff, access tutorial. Um, and, and I hope you enjoy what I'm doing so far. And I will see you next time. Take care.